In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a $120 laptop that I recently picked up from my local Best Buy. Now, I had absolutely no intention of buying a laptop when I went in. I was actually there just to get a couple micro SD cards, and I noticed in the laptop section there were two stacks of these really cheap laptops coming in at $119. And it got me thinking, would it be worth picking this up at $120? And by the way, yeah, these are also available online. I'll leave links in the description. But basically what we've got here is a 14 inch Windows powered laptop. It's not a Chromebook, it's not powered by Android or anything like that. This is the ASUS E410. On the official ASUS website, they do offer a couple different variants, but you know, we only spent 120 on this, so this is definitely a lower end unit. But I really wanted to see if it would be worth picking one of these up for light laptop use, some web browsing video playback. We're also gonna be testing some older games and emulation on this device. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 30% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $20.40 for a full Windows 11 Pro Key. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. The overall design here is actually way nicer than I thought it would be. I mean, we don't have really anything special with this device, given the price point. It's got a chiclet style keyboard. It's non-backlit. I mean, it works for what it is. It's not a horrible keyboard whatsoever. It's got the Asus number pad on the touchpad there. So this can act as your number pad if you wanted it to. It's actually easy on and off. And when it comes to the screen, we've got a 1080p IPS at 60 hertz. Nothing special, but it will get you by. As for I.O., over here on the left-hand side, we've got our power input, full-size HDMI, USB 3, USB Type-C, and a 3.5mm audio jack. Moving over to the right-hand side, we've got a USB 2.0 port, and that's about it for I.O. on this machine. Taking a look at the overall specs, this is powered by the Intel Pentium Silver N6000. I was kind of under the impression, given the price point, that this would be one of the N4105s. This chip is coming in a bit more powerful. We've got four cores, four threads, up to 3.3 gigahertz. It's got built-in Intel UHD graphics up to 850 megahertz. Now, I'd say the big downside to this, besides the storage, is the RAM amount. At that $120 price point, you're only getting 4 gigabytes of non-user upgradable RAM here. It's got 64 gigabytes of onboard eMMC storage, a 14-inch IPS 1080p screen, Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth, and out of the box, this is running Windows 11 in S mode, but it's super easy to switch out, and I'll show you how to do it in just a second once we move into the operating system. But overall, not a bad feel on the keyboard or trackpad, and I think the laptop itself does look pretty decent. It's not that heavy either. It's actually coming in at 2.87 pounds, so almost three pounds here. And again, we've got the Asus number pad on the trackpad. And basically, if you needed to use this as a number pad, you could hold this little area right here. You're going to get that LED. And from there, we can use it as a number pad. Now, I'm not exactly sure how much I would ever use this, but if somebody does a lot of document editing or financing on their laptop, this is something that could come in handy. With this laptop, there were a couple things that I did right off the bat. Now, we've got a lower end unit. These usually ship with Windows S installed. And Windows S is great if you want to use Windows apps directly from the Microsoft Store. But you can switch out for free over on the Microsoft Store. So now we've got Windows Home installed on this unit. Basically, it just takes it right into S mode for us. Super easy to do. Next thing is changing the power profile. So even while this was plugged in, it was in balanced mode. If you go to your Windows settings, just type in power, you're gonna find power mode. Out of the box, it's set balanced. I just take it to best performance, even on battery, just to make sure I can get those maximum clocks on this CPU. Because after all, I mean, when it comes down to it, we've got a pretty low end CPU. It's the Pentium Silver N6000, up to 3.3 gigahertz. And with this, we have four cores, four threads. Aside from this coming with a very low amount of storage, the main drawback I think here is gonna be the RAM amount. 
only four gigs. So yeah, I mean, four gigs with Windows 11 just isn't really gonna cut it. And in the future, if the interest is there, I could install Linux on this machine, something a little more lightweight than Windows 11, because I mean, we've got four gigs, it's non-user upgradable. And again, I think that's one of the biggest drawbacks. With 64 gigs of storage, I'm using a 128 gigabyte uh, USB drive here, just to have a little extra. And of course, we've got that Intel UHD iGPU with 32 execution units. Taking something like this and expecting to run large language models or even AAA games on it just isn't going to make sense with the specs we have here. After all, it's only 120 bucks. But I got to say, I mean, if you go into one of these knowing what you're getting, it's actually not too bad of a deal if you're just looking for kind of a web browsing PC It actually handles it quite well. You want to do some web browsing, email checking, document editing. I wouldn't trust it for video editing, but you could do a little bit of photo editing on this. And I know four gigs is really slack nowadays. Again, Linux, I think would be really awesome on a machine like this, but I did want to show you kind of how it performs all by itself. And at that $119 price mark, it's a little hard to beat something like this. And I really couldn't overlook it. Definitely wanted to pick it up just to kind of give it a shot. And we're going to check out a little bit of video playback from YouTube. We'll see if this is going to work out. And I don't think we're going to be doing any kind of 4K or anything like that. But uh, let's go ahead. I just usually run these demos. Let me pause this. We'll just go to 1080 with it. Stats for nerds. And on the initial load in, we had a few drop frames. This is kind of normal. If I let it buffer before I hit play, we probably wouldn't have any of those. But I've always had really good luck with these lower end Intel chips and video playback. So be it native playback from the internal hard drive, external hard drive, or streaming from your favorite website like Netflix, Hulu, or YouTube here. So far, it's not as bad as I was expecting it to be. I figured this would be super slow, but that N600 does keep those clocks up there. Web browsing is pretty decent. You could use Edge if you want to. I just went with Google Chrome. But the next thing I wanted to test out was a little bit of gaming. Then we're going to move over to emulation just to see how it handles it in Windows 11. Again, main issue here is going to be that RAM amount. So I did have to go with some older titles. One of my favorites, Dirt 3, running pretty decently here. We're at 900p with a low medium mix, getting an average of around 73 FPS. I haven't seen it dip under 60 and it's fully playable like this. By the way, I'm using an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. I definitely wanted to check out Half-Life 2 and right now we're at 1080 medium. I had a good feeling it was going to run this just fine. We're over 100 FPS, but obviously it's an older game. I mean, it's going to run pretty decently on a lot of different machines out there. Given that we've got that Intel UHD IGP with only 32 execution units, older stuff is really where it's going to be at. Now there was a game that I wanted to test here and I figured it would be fine and I do think it would run just fine on this chip, Hades 2, but when I booted the game up, it notified me that I couldn't run the game because I had insufficient RAM. So with four gigs, you're really going to be limited. And it's just a shame that they're still selling these machines in 2024 with only four gigs of onboard memory. I also tested OG Skyrim. And with this, I did have to take it down to 720p low settings. And you can see from that on-screen frame counter, it's under that 60 mark. So I'm in performance mode right now, plugged into the wall, so we should be getting as much as we can out of this chip, which in the end really isn't that much. And unfortunately, even something like OG Skyrim at 720p is under that mark. I mean, it's still playable like this. It's not horrible. We're right there on the edge, but it would have been nice to just run this at a smooth, steady 60. But the next thing I wanted to test here was some emulation. And with the lower end stuff, you want to do some Dreamcast, some PC Engine, some GBA. All of that's going to run fine on the N6000. I really wanted to go into this with some PSP, GameCube, and PS2 just to see what we could do up to. Now PS3 is a little out of the question with this. There may be one or two games that run decently, like some 2D stuff. But yeah, I mean, with this chip, I kind of understand what we can do with it. And I think we'd be able to go up to PS2, but for PSP, not a problem here at 3x resolution, Chains of Olympus, DirectX 11 backend using PPSSPP. So if we can run this at 3x pretty decently, the lower end stuff's going to run just fine. So now I want to take it up to GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. So I actually didn't even try to go up to 720p with it. There's a chance we could do it. 
This emulator has been very well optimized and I've had pretty decent luck on lower end Intel chips. But yeah, I mean, with something like this, you can get some GameCube and Wii emulation out of the way for sure. I am using the DirectX 11 back in, but I also tested OpenGL and Vulkan, kind of seem to perform the same here, and this is Automotalista, kind of my go-to test. But where I did run into a few performance issues was PS2 using PCSX2, and I went back and forth between OpenGL, Vulkan, DirectX 11, just to see what would happen. I even tested DirectX 12, that's what you're seeing right now, but with this one, I mean, it was a little all over the place. Again, just like all of the emulators out there, there are games that are easier to emulate. Something like Crash Bandicoot, we could definitely take up the 3X on this machine, but it's not going to do every PS2 game. It's kind of hard for me to recommend this to a lot of people out there. Now, if you've got a certain use case scenario and you know your way around, this is something you could probably have a lot of fun with. But I think there might be a little more frustration out there for somebody like, let's say my wife. If I picked this up for her, just handed it to her, told her to use it for a couple of days, she'd probably have some slowdowns here and there and never really even think about switching out of Windows S mode. I personally think besides the storage amount, which is something you can get around by using a slim USB drive and really never even notice it, it comes down to only having 4 gigs of RAM. If this was an 8 gig system at 120, I could definitely recommend it to more people, but with only 4 gigs in 2024, it's going to take a big performance hit. Now there are some use case scenarios where somebody could have a lot of fun with this. Again, installing Linux, you could do something like a little emulation setup installing Botocera, and if that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, I mean, if you're one of those people who just want to pick up a cheap laptop and mess around with it, I'll leave links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.